Hello and welcome to another video from the MicroStrategy Rooster. Today I'm going to be talking about intelligent cubes, how to create them, how to publish them, and how to use them. Uh, just a few uh, concepts about you know the intelligent cube. What it is, it is a cache that you create using a report or a report-like design. Uh, you identify different attributes, metrics that you want to lump together in a cube to create a, uh, usually to create a big cube for reports to use. Uh, the idea is you run an intelligent cube overnight or during slow times so your server uh, is better utilized and then at, during busy times where your users are using the reports, they're just hitting the intelligent server rather than the data warehouse. So it's a staging or a caching location for information for your reporting environment. It has some limitations, uh, like uh, you can't, you know, in an intelligent cube itself, you can't use some OLAP components like view filters and derived elements. Uh, you can't use prompts within the intelligent cube set. However, reports that use the intelligent cube have more flexibility they can, uh, you can use whatever you want on top of them as long as they use, like for example, you can use a prompt as long as it's prompting on information within the cube itself, etc. So you gotta be cautious about it. You can't use a prompt, like I said, in an intelligent cube because it is static, okay? Um, there's also two things that you need to keep in mind. You can't use custom groups or consolidations, uh, but you can use derived elements instead. Look at our other video, Derived Elements and see how you can get around the limitation of creating custom groups or consolidations in the uh, intelligent cube. Okay, so let's get to business. Let me show you how to create an intelligent cube. Two ways. First way is creating the intelligent cube from scratch and directly. I will use this to show you how it's done. I'm, it's not my preferred method, but I'm gonna walk you through it, then show you my preferred method. So I'm gonna right click, new, Intelligent cube, empty, just like a report editor, it's a little different. Again, you can't use prompts, so if you try to drag a prompt here, it's just not going to work, okay? Not going to let you do it. So let's go and get some attributes, uh, get it from my attributes let's see what I got let me do something by month error type I'm just gonna keep it very simple let me go to a metric percent of errors okay very simple um, here's why I don't like it so once you got this and you go to run your intelligent cube after it asks you to save it so I'm gonna call it intelligent let's call it my IC intelligent cube so look what it does there you go it runs right what did it do it executed but it's not going to show you the data like a report so if you didn't have any data there you really don't know at this point until you link to the this so I'm going to save and close okay so here it is and if you want to publish it if or you want to refresh it you can just double click and rerun it there you go, it runs again. It's not gonna show you the data. So how do you use it? Well, you're gonna create a new report. And see here, there's a tab called Intelligent Cubes. You're gonna go and find your Intelligent Cube because you're gonna point to it. There it is. That's your Intelligent Cube right here. Now you decide which components you want to use. Notice the object browser is gone because you're only using the intelligent cube at this point. So let's say I want to put error type and just the percent of errors. Okay. Finally, I see my data. So I had to go to the extra step of after creating the intelligent cube, publishing the intelligent cube or running it, then pointing to it to able to see what's in my intelligent cube, okay? So let me save this and close. We we'll call it my IC. Okay. So what did we do now? Oops. Save and close my IC report. 
didn't like the fact that I was using the same cube name, okay? So what did we do? We created a cube with a couple of attributes and a metric. We executed it, saved it, and then we pointed to it, and we were able to create some data off of it. But remember that whole process, I didn't see my data until I connected. That's why I do not recommend this, for instance. The way I would go about doing it is I create a data set first, or a report. Here's my report. Created this a few minutes before this recording this video. I'll show you what it has. It has a bunch of attributes and a bunch of metrics, okay? So what is this? It's a just a report. Nothing nothing special about it, okay? I'll shrink it here. Show you what I'm going to do with it. Well, let's say I created this report and I decide, you know what? I like this report, but I want it to be an intelligent cube. Go to data. There's Okay, let's go format the data. Okay. Apologize. Go and I have to go into edit mode first. That's why I didn't see my option. So I have to go to edit mode. Then data. There it is. The intelligent cube option. So I want to convert this report to intelligent cube. Remember, this is important. The minute you convert a report to an intelligent cube, it's no more a report. So if you wanted to save the report as something else before you use it, make a copy of it because the minute you go here, you're gone. It's not a report, it's an intelligent cube. There we go. There's my intelligent cube. Okay. So uh, let me save and close it. Let's just call it, yeah, keep it, keep the typical converted from. So there was my data set, and it's a converted now into a report from a data set, okay? So let me execute this report, or this data set, because I want to publish it, right? So I created it, doesn't mean it exists. We double click it, it'll run. Okay, so it says converted from data set, the name of the report, execution completed, it's been published as an intelligent cube, okay? So I'm done with this. Alright, so now I want to use it. Well, now I can go and create a new report and use it. Or, I can edit an existing report, even if it's a report that already uses an intelligent cube, that first my IC. But look what I'm going to do here. Go to the design mode. Go to intelligent cubes. I'm going to point it to a different cube. I'm going to switch it to this new cube, okay? Look what happens. Boom. Our new objects here. These two, because they were already on the template and they exist in the new intelligent cube, it kept them on. But this report now is using that new intelligent cube and not the old. So let me run it. Obviously, it's the same data so nothing's going on there let me save and close so here we saw how we created an intelligent cube based on an existing report published it then pointed this report to use it again you could point an existing report to use an intelligent cube you can create a new report to use an intelligent cube it's really up to you how you want to point and use so what are the uh, some few critical things to remember well let's edit this report that points to the intelligent cube and look at it quickly alright so what kind of editors are we missing there's a view filter here notice there's no regular filter box right here because you're using this intelligent cube you can't use filters remember filters are going to go against your warehouse view filters will go against your data so you still have the filtering capability but it has to be done through a view filter and again you won't have prompts we spoke about that nor custom groups nor uh, consolidations okay so uh, let's close this and talk about the properties of the intelligent cube there's two things that you need to be cautious about let me right click here and show you how to schedule. You can schedule a refresh cube. 
Remember I talked about cubes running overnight? Well, you can schedule it, right? So you right click, schedule deliver to, refresh cube, and you can give it a name, and you can say, okay, I want it to run on certain schedule. You can have your admin create a bunch of schedules for you, and you can even have it notify you. You can expire it. You can run it immediately if you want it just to right now, run right now, etc. So here I have a some pre-cached schedule, or I can run it, okay? And I can send a notif notification when it runs, if it's running on a certain schedule, okay? So let me just run it now. So how do you know if it runs overnight? Well, the admin knows, not you. You might be able to figure out from the, uh, so we're going to system monitor. I'm going to monitor the cache, and there it is. It's sitting in my cache. It says, oh, yeah, this ran. It, it actually will, if you double click, it'll show you all the different cubes running and tell you when they ran and when they were last updated and the size of the cube, etc. So the admin also has the right to come here and remove it. Okay? He can unload it from memory or completely delete it. Let me just unload it from the memory. So here it is. It's this one is loaded L and this is not loaded he can rerun it meaning he can reload it so this means that he's grabbed the information but didn't delete it but just made it unavailable but then the admin can reload it and it's back or altogether can delete it can deactivate it be careful if he deactivates and report pointing to it becomes deactivated as well or useless okay so that's that and uh, let me talk a little bit about dynamic sourcing. Dynamic sourcing is a capability for having a report. So what we have a report targeted and use an intelligent cube. So let me show you. If we go back to our reports, each one of these or this report, we pointed it to this intelligent cube, then we repointed it to a different one. But what if I don't know which intelligent cube and I, I my admin wants me to take advantage of this? Well, let's see. Let me create a new report. Okay. And here's the thing where you've got to be cautious about it. Now, if you just use items that are in a published intelligent cube, and then call it intelligent cube is not blocked for you for security or for another uh security filter or any other data limitation that you have you will be able to access it so here's my attributes remember I used a bunch of these all of them so let's say I just use month and then I used a metric now I know these two are part of that intelligent cube okay so when I run this it's gonna run really fast it's gonna be hitting my intelligent cube okay and let's see if it gives us shows us where it went show you the report caching options it's using the default project level which means if at the project level you enabled cache it should be able to grab it just like an intelligent cube and the VLDP Okay. Let's see. Uh, I'm looking for the option that lets me block. Okay, join. All right, it's eluding me at the moment, but I'll get to it. Here it is, dynamic sourcing. So by default, it's enabled, which means a report can look for an intelligent cube and use it. If by any reason the admin does not, or the developer does not want you to use an intelligent cube, he can disable it here, okay? That way it will not look, and it will hit the, if you disable it, it will always go against the data warehouse, you enable it. If it finds an intelligent cube with the same properties and filtering, as the report it will go against your intelligent cube okay so that's just one setting to keep in mind so here's our report 
Okay, let me close this. And uh, again, like uh, one more thing to talk about intelligent cubes here. Looking at my notes, let me just edit this one last time and show you one more thing. Now remember, when you run a report against intelligent cube just like this one, you still have that dynamic aggregation, meaning I still can do something like uh, pulling back and forth. I can pull the month. Okay. There it is. I can right click and move it to page by, have all that ability, and I can create drive metrics. So I can right click and insert new metric. And I can do something like errors divided by national average. Okay. Obviously I didn't format it to be a percent, but you know, you could do the typical you know report reporting, analyzing, analysis on a report. Obviously you'll see a little bit less options because again, this is using an intelligent cube so it has that limitation you know you lose the filtering you lose a bunch of stuff like the prompting etc but you gain a lot in as far as performance okay so with this we'll conclude uh, this video about intelligent cubes how to create them publish them unload them load them share them and dynamically uh, target them within your reporting environment okay thanks